want it or need it to feel what is true. Just take it and know that what's here or here is just a lyrical pill. Some you can't taste. London Jules, the wonderful makeup artist behind the scenes of Slice and the comedian Baby J. How are y'all doing? Doing good, doing good tonight. I'm good, I'm good. Lil J, Lil J. Lil J, I'm sorry, Lil J, Lil J. But we are here, this is going to be an awesome event. I'm Brittany Brackett, once again I play Pamela Flemings in the role uh, in, in Slice. So we look forward to seeing how everything goes. Everything's going to be great. We're looking forward to seeing Pierre come in in a little while. So guys, tell us a little bit about what you thought was the best part of the film. Well, I don't want to give too much detail on the uh, film, but the uh, best experience for me was to be able to meet all these wonderful cast and crews. Uh, it was really a pleasure. We worked really hard uh, in a matter span of two weeks every day, no days off. So, uh, you know, congrats to everybody and Pierre and the whole production team as well as the cast and crew. London was tired a lot. I saw him. He did my makeup. He made me look wonderful. Outside in the cold. <laughs> yeah, in the cold. All right, Lil' Jay, tell us your experience with the film. Did you enjoy doing it? Was it your first film? My first film. I enjoyed it. It's, all I can say is, hey, what about OJ? <laughs> what about OJ? All right, guys. Well, we're going to get back to well, a no, little bit. Quick question for you. Oh, what, boy. What was your experience on the film? My experience on the film was awesome. It was uh, a major, major role for me. I, I'm, I thank God and Pierre for giving me the opportunity, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. <laughs> well, I'm getting y'all too, so yes. Oh, I'm Damian Clark. I pay, play Basnick. I think my character is Basnick, and then this is this is my partner Yaya McLean, and he plays Dobbins. Uh, we're the two detectives that give uh, Pierre's character a hard time all the time. Oh, yeah, we, we cut the fool in this movie. You know? We're like uh, Ren and Tin. Yeah, <laughs> Ren and Stimpy. <laughs> Pinky in the brain. Women <laughs> Clown. It's, it's a horror comedy. It's about comedy. Baskin and Dobbins. Yeah, they, they didn't know that, but it's really about us <laughs> and our upcoming. We're going to be in the sequel, and it's going to be just about and call us. It, it's called a horror because that's the little scary yeah, part. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little scary, too. And, and, and I'm Kenny Stroud, and I approve this message as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dennis Clark from Memphis, Tennessee, and Pierre gave me the opportunity to be in the film, and you are? I'm Alpha Trevette, and I play Mr. Nixon, and I think I'm one of the only people who escapes the film alive. Now, I escaped alive, okay, too. There's two of us. <laughs> the, two, the two living people who got out of the film alive. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> oh, yeah, I had a great time. Uh, I played this cat, uh, Mr. Templeton, and he did 17 years in prison, uh -huh. and he comes back to really, really get to enjoy himself uh, with uh, being uh, thought to be a killer. <laughs> well, I, Mr. Nixon is kind of a pivotal role. I guess I give the backstory of what, what really happened in the neighborhood. So, uh, and I'm a crusty old guy, and hopefully the scene comes off good. We'll see. Hey, I saw it. It came off really, oh, really good. Enjoy doing this. This was like. Well, I had a great time. This is not this very much a departure from Bishop to profane captain. <laughs> that motherfucker. You know what I mean? That's all, I'm sorry, but I got to say bad words, so it was great. I had a great time, and Pierre's a great guy. Okay. So yeah, it was neat. I, I had a great time. Okay. Yeah. Start the movie. Um, check this out. Uh, at the end of the movie, this is how I do it. We like family. If you want to come up here and take pictures with some of the actors you uh, you've seen, you're welcome to come up here and get whoever you know in with the picture. So we like a big family. If you want to go home, cool. If you want to stay long, we'll, we'll hang out. We'll have a good time. Enjoy the movie, man. Like I said, we had fun making it, and I hope you guys laugh and enjoy it. God bless y'all. Thank you so much. All right, y'all. Here we go. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your boy, Pierre. That's right, comedian extraordinaire. I'm the first one that brought Light Skin Brothers back before Barack Obama. Right now, we enjoyed our... Uh, uh, my film premiere for my new movie, Slice. It's a horror comedy. So it's off the chain. We had a nice little evening. Everyone came out, man. It's, a, it's exciting, man. Um, this is my second movie. Some of y'all might remember the first movie I did myself called For the Love of Money. Now, I've been in a lot of them, like Baps, How to Be a Player, The Wash, and all that. But now I'm behind the camera and in front of the camera doing it all. You know what I'm saying? And this is a horror comedy. So it's got some horror, some funniness, and check it out. Since I directed and I wrote it, 
I killed a white man first, okay? <laughs> you know, we always dying first. It's his time to go first. So uh, check it out, man. And please, if you get a chance, you know, to see it, check it out. But don't bootleg it. This is my joint, okay? Don't bootleg my joint, please. Slice. It's a new horror movie, all right? I got plenty more coming. Holla at your boy. And I tell you what, I don't watch nothing unless I watch PTV, all right? Well, it's your boy Pierre, and you're watching Neo Soul. If you ain't watching Neo Soul, you might as well watch nothing at all. Holla. This is Miss Flo Jangles with Neo Soul, and we're at the American Black Film Festival with Rhonda Blaka. Baraka. Baraka. <laughs> um, she's the writer for uh, Trinity Goodheart. And tell us a little bit about the movie and what, what made you write this movie. Um, I really set out in this movie to tell a story um, of a little girl who has an opportunity to, to, to heal people and to uh, bring people together. And that's what Trinity does. She sets out to find her mother, and in the process she also tries to bring her family, her grandparents, back together. And um, as she does that, she really teaches them a lot about forgiveness and, and letting go and, and family. Mm. Um, <clears throat> right in the movie, um, Eric Benet, what, what part does he play in the movie? Eric plays uh, Trinity's father. He okay. plays Jeremy Goodhart. Um, this is Eric's first major film, uh, feature film appearance where he plays a lead. And he did an amazing job. He really identified with the role. He's a single father himself. He has a daughter. And um, he said on, on several occasions that he really identified with the character and he identified with the story. And he and Erica had a great relationship on set. It seems really heartwarming. Um, what, what are you looking to do in the future? Um, just looking to tell more stories, to, um, to write, direct, produce more films and, and television shows and, and, and tell stories that hopefully will be entertaining and uplifting. Well, we can't wait to see it. It's Trinity Thank Goodhart. You. Well, I'm Erica Gluck. Many of you may know me as Brett Brett on the game, and I am now currently starring in a GMC presentation, Trinity Goodhart. Tell us a little bit about the movie. Trinity Goodheart is about a relentless 12-year-old girl who goes on a quest to find her grandparents and her mother. Oh, okay. And you did do Bree Bree. So good. <laughs> <laughs> we love Bree Bree in the game. Um, how was it working with Eric Benet? How was that? I love Eric Benet. On set, um, he, we were like best buddies. We were like fooling around. We were both really goofy. And it was a great time with Eric Benet. That's good. Thank you, Erica. My name is Eric Benet, and I play Jeremy Goodhart, Trinity's daddy. Trinity Goodhart is a heartfelt story about a 12-year-old girl who, who's been raised by her dad her whole life. And she doesn't have any of her grandparents or her mother around. And when she goes to her dad to get answers, and she doesn't get any of them, she decides to go on a quest to find them her own. Yeah, this is pretty much my, my, my first male lead. And I feel very fortunate and blessed to be working alongside this extremely talented actress here and the entire crew uh, the director Joanna Huck and the writer Rhonda Baraka just such a wonderful uh, crew and we I think we both felt very much in in great hands through the production of this film hi I'm Erica Gluck and you are watching Neo Soul show Liz says Eric Benet Hello, my name is Sean Blakemore uh, right now I'm uh, one of the new characters on General Hospital um, what else you want to know? I want to know about your character. My character on General Hospital, he's like a, he's a very complicated character uh, who makes some difficult choices. He's like a Jason Bourne, and he was hired to come do a job in the city of Port Charles, which is on uh, General Hospital. Mm -hmm. But by him coming there to shake up Port Charles, his life took a turn in itself as well. So he's a bad boy turned good. You know, I haven't seen General Hospital in a while, but I'm going to watch it. Oh, now. yeah, you need to watch it. No. I'm going to watch it. I, it's I a whole new face. You. Look, the la yeah, <laughs> the last time I seen it, you're going to yeah. laugh at me. Uh-oh. <laughs> when is that? Luke and Laura. That was like forever ago. That's my mom. Used, uh, she was watching back. That's how I know about Luke and Laura. Yeah. And that's so yeah. funny. People say that a lot. But, they uh, do, because that's the most memorable moment, yes. I believe, on General Hospital is Luke yeah. and Laura. I saw that on television um, because I, I didn't know about the characters mm -hmm. outside of Luke and Laura. I mean, um, right. The wedding was the highest rating uh, wedding scene in any television show. Oh, you look like you might play a doctor. You got that look. 
<laughs> no, he, he's not a doctor. He's uh, he's ex-military. Oh, okay. Who, who suffers from uh, post-traumatic stress. Okay. Um, he was, again, he was hired by an individual to kidnap one of the other characters and and to do other things. And in the midst of doing all of that, uh, well, you that's know complications. what I like about that particular character is that nobody portrays um, the fact that people go to war and come back and right. and, and that's good. Yes. Because nobody does. Yeah. You know, it's just. And, and that's good. That's well, good. lately it's been more talk about that. Yeah, yeah. there hasn't been um, a lot of conversations about uh, post-traumatic stress. Right. But there's more talk about it, about them really just accepting it, that it is the truth. Right. And uh, especially me having friends who served in the wars, and um, thank goodness they've all been okay, but there are millions out there who suffer from that disease. Right. And so they touch on this. It's not his only story, but that was the one that was introduced, and it's something that he is dealing with. What's up, everybody? This is Sean Blakemore, General Hospital. One love to Neil So. This is Miss Flo Jangles at the American Black Film Festival in Miami, and I have Melissa Young sitting next to me. Hi. Hi, everyone. Melissa, tell them a little bit about yourself and what you do. Well, I, I wear a lot of hats. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am here at the American Black Film Festival as a screenwriter. My feature script titled Good Noble is a finalist in the GMC screenwriting competition. Um, I do quite a few things though. I focus a little bit in music and in film. Um, you can hear a little bit of what I do at melissayoungmusic.com and judge for yourself. <laughs> but have fun while you're listening, by all means. <laughs> she does wear a lot of hats. Now your film, um, that's featured, what's that about? Um, the film is about a 14-year-old girl. Um, her name is Noble mm -hmm. and she is a genius. She has an IQ of 175, which is pretty high. <laughs> Um, but she falls under the radar, which is something that's very close to my heart. I, right. I think that there are a lot of young kids that fall under the radar in school and, and they're just labeled as problem kids when they're mm -hmm. actually more advanced than their classmates and some teachers don't pick up on it. Right. So it's a story about her being genius and she kind of falls under the radar, but she does it on purpose. She doesn't want anyone to know that she's a genius because she's afraid that um, if she uses her brain to the fullest extent, that she will become ill, mentally ill, like her father. He was a, a great scientist and he developed um, paranoid schizophrenia. Mm. And so she's afraid that she will develop or inherit that illness if she uses her brain to the full extent. Oh, okay. It sounds very interesting. Thank you. Well, good luck. Thank you so much. That. And I'm sure you deserve it. All them hats you wear, you work hard. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully you'll be singing. You know what? I don't. I don't think I'll make a singing appearance at the festival this year. But you know, who knows? If she wins, she'll be singing. <laughs> yeah, if I win, I'll be singing definitely. Well, I'd like to say, deuces to Neo Soul. I love you guys. Love you so much. Thank you for all that you do. I am here for the Gospel Music Channel Screenplay Competition. I'm one of the four finalists, mm -hmm. and on Saturday night they'll be doing a tribute to Keenan Ivory Wayans and oh, wow. also announcing the winner of our contest. Oh, okay. Um, what do you like most about the film festival? I think just the opportunity that it gives people like myself that, you know, I've been writing for 12 years, but the opportunity to actually have credible um, script writers, producers actually read my work and to be validated, it's what you need when you're in a creative position like myself and you want to keep moving forward. So being exposed to this is amazing. We had a table read rehearsal today and, you know, there's A-list actors that are actually reading my work and they're acting it out and it's amazing. Could you tell us a little bit about your work and what it's sure. about? Sure, um, I actually wrote a script called Somebody's Child and it's about two brothers. Um, they're twins that were separated at birth and now 37 years later um, their mom is on her deathbed and she confesses wow. the secret and it's all kinds of things that happen as a result. But it's about um, faith and hope and just never giving up. She's been praying for their reunion since she gave them away and now 37 years later they found one another, so, wow. yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Lady, this is all big history, man. Been here, been out here, been doing it. I ain't going nowhere. Best been on the ride. I was born at the bottom, but I made it to the top. Get these suckers what they want straight, real, nonstop. 
I ball on a daily basis, look at what I got To the lurker, stain twice, cause every strap I own hot I started selling weed, breaking bricks with my dude A zone representative, so you know I keep that too My ego full blown like a silver bag gorilla And I don't fuck with broke hoes, only bitches buy they squiller Me, you can keep that, I'm rolling up the cush You snitch on me, hater, then I'm coming out the bush I'm ten toes in these streets, cause I ain't got time to play I'm jugging out my knee on from the K to the A And everybody know me and what I'm about I bang zone one but reside on the south I made power moves, just hit me, I'm in route My intentions are to win, said and done and now I'm out I'm in it to win it, I'm on my money grind I'm in it to win it, don't waste my precious time I'm in it to win it, I'm on my money grind I'm in it to win it, don't waste my precious time And I am here with Kiana Dancy. Hello, hey. how are you? I'm fine, how are you? I'm perfect, thank you. Tell us about the movie, The Magic City. Okay, so The Magic City is actually, you know, in Atlanta, The Magic City is a strip club. So yes. technically, everyone wanted to know you're stripping. No, I'm not stripping, but The Magic City mm -hmm. is actually um, based on Miami, because a lot of Miamians know that they call Miami the Magic City. Right. So the story is actually a modern day crash. It's based on five different children who have very, they all come from the same background, but they lead very different lives. Okay. Um, my sister actually is rich. She's very well off. She's married, uh, but she's a, she's a, she's not as good of a parent as I am. And quite often, you know, we feel that we seem to think that when you have money, that you have a better upbringing of your children, and that's not the case. I am educated in the movie, but I also, um, my kids are well more well-mannered. My children are going through things because of their environment. We live in the hood, right. but I am a better parent, and I don't have the money that my sister has. So my niece is actually dropped off to me, and you see all the things that she's dealing with being raised in a more privileged environment, which oftentimes can right. be a lot. Um, we have a lot of twists and turns. We have some a little bit of death. We have some fun. We have murder, we have shooting, you know. But overall, the story is phenomenal. Um, our Malcolm Jones did a very, very good job okay. of um, portraying the Miami city. Oh, okay. Yeah. And he, he produces a lot of videos. He does, so. he does. Um, one of the, well, two, two of the um, videos that you guys may know, he's worked with everyone, including Little Mama, R. Kelly. Uh, he's worked with, um, YC, Racks and Racks and Racks, that's his most recent video, right. was the YC Racks on Racks and Racks video. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of people may know him or at least know his work, at least right. know his work. And this is his first feature film, so we're extremely excited about it. And although I consider myself an Atlantan, I, I'm straight from Atlanta, um, <laughs> I'm very happy that he was, you know, he chose me to represent Miami. 
By the way, we didn't mention that I am a stand-up comedian, and you know, this is a very, very different role for me because I'm having to be very serious. But I'm that mama, like I make people laugh and I keep it real. But yeah. you know, it, it was a different, it was a challenge for me a little bit because I had to be serious mm -hmm. more than I had to be funny. So uh, you're right. So if you, well, I'll definitely come see. Me. It sure did. It sure <laughs> did. So it worked for Monique. And it sure did. And you know, it's funny. Um, I'll make sure I plug into your system. I'll let you guys know when I'm going to be at Mingles again because. Rodney Perry is my boy, by the way. Yeah. I did Who's Got Jokes with him, and he was hilarious. Hilarious. Yeah. Okay, listen, this is Kiana Dancy. You can find me on the web, kianadancy.com. Follow me on Twitter, K-I-A-N-A-D-A-N-C-I-E. I, I want to give a huge shout-out and lots of wet, juicy kisses to Neo Soul, all the way from the Black Film Festival right here in Miami, Florida. Peace. And with me, I have three beautiful actresses from the movie The Magic City. Tell us your name and a little bit about yourself. My name is Latrice Jackson, and I'm a, a actress. And I like to, I like to be like in the movie. We have to be sad, happy, frustrated about our aunts dying, and we don't want nobody to find out. Oh, okay. And what about you, huh? <laughs> my name is Lachelle Jackson. I play Nia in the movie. My character is trying to protect my sister. Okay. Hi, my name is Amaya, and I play Amaya in the movie, and basically I'm just helping them out. <laughs> okay, um, what what did you like best about the movie? Well, I like all of it, like every single part of in that movie. <laughs> I like all of it. You're going to be a big actress. I agree. <laughs> um, probably lunchtime. That's my favorite part. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> you get everything. <laughs> I love Neo show. <laughs> I love Neo Show. That's my girl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and sitting next to me, I have Keith. Keith, what's tell, happening? Hey, tell us why you're here and what you do. I'm an actual. I'm a singer and an actor myself, and uh, I'm here because I have a film in the festival called Dysfunctional Friends. Oh, okay. So we just screened it, went over real well. So uh, we're excited about it. Y'all check it out when it comes to a theater near you. What's Show. the movie about? It's actually about a, a, a young guy who uh, makes a fortune in social networking. Right. He dies in a parachute accident, and he actually leaves all his money to his 11 dysfunctional friends. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the rich parachute dead guy. So, uh, oh, okay. I kinda, so you didn't get to spend the money. Well, I, didn't get, well, I spent a little bit of it, and then I jumped out of a plane and, and, and blew it. So uh, I let my boy spend it. So I'm a good friend. It sounds funny. It is. It's funny. It's dramatic. It's got a lot of elements. It's, it's, a, good, it's a good flick. I was proud of it. Shout out to Neo Soul. It's Keith Robinson, A-Town in the building, hometown. See y'all soon. Holla. Wesley Jonathan. Wesley Jonathan. <laughs> Two first names. <laughs> Wesley, tell us what you do and why you're here. Well, uh, I'm an actor of 24 years. Uh, Hold I, on. How old are you? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lot older than I look. I'm an actor of 24 years. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I have a film here uh, called Dysfunctional Friends that I'm in, as well as Associate Produced, starring Stacey Dash, Terrell Owens, Keith Robinson, Megan Good, myself, Jason Weaver, Christian Keys, Reagan Gomez, Persia White, Josea Sanchez, uh, and many, many more. Uh, so we just got through watching the uh, first screening. The next screening is on Saturday at 12. So if you're in Miami, come down and check out the movie. Congratulations. Thank you, you get to be one of the guys that spend the money, huh? <laughs> What's going on? Wesley Jonathan and you're watching Neo Soul 2011 American Black Film Festival, Miami. <laughs> so you are a New Yorker. Um, via Portsmouth, Virginia. That's right. And now exactly. you're in Los Angeles. That's right. So it was the weather. Um, you know what? It was the work. It was, it was the work. Everything that has happened to me kind of took place in Los Angeles, and really? so I kind of had to stay there. L.A. is my job. I was born and raised in L.A. Where, and really? I love it, and it's the work there, and yes. it's good weather. Yes. But they Minus will keep the you earthquakes. Busy. Okay. Minus the earthquakes. I'm glad they don't happen every week. <laughs> but. <laughs> but it's better than a tornado, right? Well, don't you get a warning? What well, at least the earthquake is just a little, little, okay. you know, and then you're like, oh, is that an earthquake? Yeah, we're going to talk about that one in Northridge because I was there for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Edit. <laughs> what was the first performance you ever had? 
The very first major performance I will never forget was a wedding. It was a huge wedding. And I was very young. I probably was 16 at the time. And I remember this guy asking me, how much do you charge to play a wedding? And I had never played a wedding. I hadn't played any job where anyone asked me how much I wanted. And I was thinking, I thought about it and pondered. And I said, $25. Like, that was so much money. Wow. See, that's how they get you. Right. He came to a Yanni concert years wow. later. He said, do you remember me? You played at my wedding. I said, for $25? <laughs> and he said, yes. He laughed. Wow. He's still married to the same woman. They have, like, five children. Are you serious? Yeah, at that time. Longevity. Yeah, it was good. I, I said, good. I was good luck. <laughs> I was a junior in high school. I knew really? this was what I wanted to do. Wow. Yes. And it's really paid off. It's yes, really I've enjoyed it. I've had a very interesting life. I've been places all over the world. I've seen people, if I just stayed uh, in the one place, I, I don't feel that I would have been as enlightened about the world and other right. people for sure. Right, because you went from one coast to another. And that I did. Traveled. And you can't be afraid. That just shows no. when you follow your dream. Yes, you follow absolutely. follow your passion, because I'm sure there were others who said, you want to do what? Yes, they did. Because where I grew up, you either worked at the shipyard, you went to college, or you got married, or you joined the military. That was kind of what was going on around me. And when I said I, want, I was scared to tell people I wanted to play violin. They were like, you can't make a living doing that. And it was 35 years later. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Two children later. Oh, that's yes. amazing, though. I, I feel I very blessed. Little one, that is so amazing. I feel very nothing blessed. nothing better than the gift of life. Yes. Yes. Well, you know, once they start walking... Yeah, you nail everything on here. the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> you set the ceiling. Yes, nailing everything on the ceiling. Well, it's truly been a pleasure interviewing with you today. Oh, thank um, you. Can you give a shout-out to Neo Soul for me? Okay, here's a shout-out to Neo Soul from Karen Briggs, the Fiddler. Amen. <laughs>